Amen. Well, earlier on in this uh, week, I uh, interviewed Alastair and Suzanne, who are local teachers, and I'd love to share that uh, interview with you. So let's go over to Alastair and Suzanne. Well, thank you to Alistair and to Suzanne for joining us uh, for this little short chat about finding out about all the things that are going on uh, in the local school. Because as you know, Alistair and Suzanne are local secondary school teachers and lots and lots has changed for them. So I thought it'd be really good just to get uh, them together and to share with us all how things are going for them uh, and also for teachers and also for students at the moment where huge amounts of change is going on and we're going to finish by praying for them at the end. So thank you for joining us Suzanne and Alistair and uh, my first question uh, for you is is how has things changed for you during this lockdown time and all that's happened in recent weeks? Well I'd say first of all that um, learning to teach students remotely has been uh, a bit of a change uh, having to set virtual lessons with the students not in front of you has taken more time to organize. You have to pitch it at a level where they have to be able to get on with it without you in front. That's been hard to get used to. Um, assigning grades to students who are sitting exams but are not sitting exams has been a, a bit of a task as well. Getting to grips with new technology, Zoom and Microsoft Teams for um, virtual lessons and meetings and things like that with all the things that can possibly crash or go wrong. I think marking and feedback has been completely different. That's, that's, that's um, the hard, hardest bit probably, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You want to say some of that, something about that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but it is the <laughs> hardest bit because obviously we're used to, when we're teaching, if a student gets stuck, we're right there, we can help them. If, um, if you know, if they need anything, we, we can give them verbal feedback, we collect their books in, we can give them written feedback and we just can't do any of that anymore. And there's obviously a, a big delay between their, what they're stuck with, their requests, et cetera, and we have to do it all um, online, which is obviously very different for them and us. And the last thing I would say is about the different styles of lessons. We're now doing some face-to-face -face lessons. We've got virtual lessons, but live, and then you've still got the remote lessons as well. And sometimes you've got your students doing one type while you're doing another type, and, and, and just juggling all of that is, is, is fairly uh, chaotic, in, certainly in my mind at the moment. Yeah, it just feels for me sometimes that we, I think actually Alistair you said this earlier when we were chatting that normally if we're teaching we're teaching and everyone knows you're teaching um whereas we could be in a well Alistair could be in a face-to-face -face lesson while one of his remote lessons is happening at the same time um and then maybe you've got to get onto an online lesson yeah. and it, the technology juggling them all is quite yeah. difficult at times and uh, so much to learn in a relatively short period of time as well Absolutely. about how getting to grips with all these things and, and the extra time that it must have taken you, as you say, to, to prepare right. for all of this. Um, but also you are some, a, a wonderful uh, part of, of the St Andrew's family uh, and you've been at St Andrew's Church for many, many years. Uh, and, it's, and it's great uh, to, to have these sort of insights um, than, than how all the teachers are doing. But there's one question I'd love to ask, uh, which is a, a spiritual question really, which is um, how have you found God in all of these changes? And, and how does your faith sustain you in these difficult times? Like, yeah. but, but I think if I'm really honest, at the beginning I was anxious and I picked up on the anxiety of my form group, etc. And it was quite hard just to keep um, on the surface, I'm probably revealing too much now, on the surface we look calm, um, but you do take on board the, the student's feeling and I was carrying that a bit. But when we went down into absolute lockdown, I um, found that I quickly found my own rhythm again and it just meant that I could have longer um, and more sustained, deeper, um, quiet times with the Lord. And um, in that quiet time, or in those quiet times over the first week, I just felt the anxiety go, the peace um, come in place. And one of the things Alistair and I talked about was that we just believed that God knew this pandemic was coming. He knew that we were going to be teachers. He knew we were going to be teaching in senior schools, um, secondary school. Um, and therefore, he knew 
um, where we were going to be placed, how are we going to be placed in all of this. So therefore, we obviously believe he's in ultimate control. And therefore, if God is in control of this pandemic, if he's in control of um, our lives, and we believe he is, that we could just walk out and trust in him. So therefore, when we did have to go um, and do our first duty um, to look after the students who are vulnerable um, or uh, students of key workers, and we just felt that we were walking out under the umbrella of um, the Lord's provision and his strength and comfort and protection. Ultimately, that's what I have felt all of the time. If we stay within the rules that the government are setting and under the rules of the Lord, that every time we walk out to do whatever we're asked to do as teachers, um, we feel safe <laughs> under that provision. Mark. We do pray um, more as well. We, we pray the uh, Lord's Prayer at 12 o'clock every day, as, as um, Jenny, Jenny Thornton, Thornton it was who promoted that. But Wonderful. we pray for common sense. Yeah, we pray for common sense for ourselves, but also for the students as well, now that we're back in school, to be sensible in terms of keeping their distance and, mm. and um, just reducing the risks so that obviously you're in a, a little bit more of a risky situation, but minimising that as far as can possibly be. So we pray for them and we pray for ourselves and our colleagues as well. Wonderful. And, and talking of prayer, it, my last question to you is, is how can we pray for you specifically? Not only as a couple, uh, but also for, for teachers and, and for the students and for the schools. Um, well, in, on a wider scale, I think um, pray for wisdom for the government because um, every few weeks new things emerge about what things are going to look like in the remainder of the summer and perhaps in September. So wisdom for them, I think, is an important thing to pray for. But also I'd like to suggest pray for the students that they can maintain enthusiasm and drive um, right up till the end of term. Um, sometimes if things go on for a large number of weeks, enthusiasm can wane and, and um, you know, like it or not, we aren't going to be able to be as far through the syllabuses as we should be. So they need to keep their enthusiasm and drive going right till the end. Um, and I think pray for ourselves a bit as well. <laughs> sustenance also for us to keep going but also to get some uh restoration and some rest over the summer so that we're recharged for september whatever and that's that us looks and, like. and and all teachers isn't it that's Just all teachers that, yeah we can be restored over the summer so again whatever the new 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 is because i call what the stage we're in the new new so obviously whatever september brings might be the third new for us um so if we can all be restored um and re-energized then hopefully what ever comes our way in September again we can just take on board and and plow on um, and then I think individually as a couple um, just healing we, we, we've loved the the, the way um, a God's ministry has come through your online um, services and the healing at the end and um, Again, on a wider scale, I, I won't talk too much about it, um, but um, amazing things I know have happened to Christians and non-Christians through um, the healing prayers that go um, on at the end of the service, as we know they normally do it at the end of any service and when we're in church together. Um, so again, we just, yeah, for God's healing hand to be on us, we're um, starting to feel our age. <laughs> Good, good. Thank you so much uh, for sharing. We're going to pray now for you uh, and for all the teachers and, and students and schools. And as we close together, let, let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, as uh, Suzanne has, has already said, that you are in control and that you are sovereign and that you rule and you reign over your universe. And Lord, we thank you that uh, you were not surprised by this coronavirus, this evil that has come upon the world. But Lord, we thank you that you are bringing good out of this difficulty. And Lord, we ask by your mighty power that you would energise the teachers and students alike, that you would help them day by day as they teach, as they learn, as they deal with this technology that sometimes can be quite tricky. 
and, and too, Lord, we are aware of the huge amount of effort that uh, the teachers and students have put into this new style of learning. And uh, especially, Lord, we pray that you would help them uh, be prepared for, uh, for their exams and, and, and wisdom, as Alistair has asked, uh, for the government and, and for head teachers and teachers alike as they navigate through these difficult times in the months ahead. We pray too, Lord, for the summer and for rest, that teachers and pupils will be re-energised over this period of rest and recuperation. And Lord, we ask your, your blessing to be upon them all. Keep them close to you and encourage them step by step, day by day in their walk with you. And so, Lord, we lift this whole area to you. And Lord, help us to uh, hold them all in our prayers as we cry out to you. As you bring good out of this difficulty. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Alistair and Suzanne, for uh, that wonderful interview.